So let's go ahead and do an example where we use the inverse property, where we have to undo one of those um, piecewise problems, um, where we have the e to minus something times capital F. So um, we're going to compute L inverse of 1 over S minus 4. times e to minus 2s and L inverse of s over s squared plus 9 times e to minus pi over 2 times s. And we're going to be using this property that L inverse of um, e to minus as times f of s is equal to f of t minus a, u of t minus a. So for our first problem, L inverse of e to minus 2s, 1 over s minus 4. We see an e to minus 2s, so that tells us right away that we're thinking about a equal to 2. Um, and then the big F, is 1 over s minus 4, which means my little f is e to 4t. So hopefully those Laplace um, transforms are becoming kind of more familiar to us. But when I use this property, I need f of t minus a. So everywhere I see t in f, I'm going to replace with t minus a. So for this, it's e to 4. I better write down what it is. e to 4 times t minus a, where a is 2. So this inverse Laplace is going to be f of t minus a, e to 4 times t minus 2, times u of t minus a, u of t minus 2. Um, and at this point, we did it. We computed that inverse Laplace transform. Because I care that you know what we're doing, I'm also going to write down what the function is. So um, it's 0 for t between 0 and 2. Um, and then it becomes e to 4 times t minus 2. Um, let me make that less scrunchy. I will put it over here. So it's 0. And then it's e to 4 times t minus 2 for every t after 2. What the u does is it's 0, and then it's 1, which means the function entirely is the f of t minus a. Let's go ahead and try another example. Um, L inverse of e to minus pi over 2s times s over s squared plus 9. So in this case, inside the e, I see minus pi over 2s, so that means my a is minus pi over 2. And then multiplied by that, I see f is equal to s over s squared plus 9. That means that my little f is one of those um, cosine? Yeah, cosine has s on top, so it's cosine. And then it's 3t from the... Um, Sorry, I just started shifting up a little bit. It's 3t from the 9 on bottom, which is 3 squared. I always need to figure out what my f of t minus a is going to be. So for us, that's going to be cosine of 3. And then I replace t with t minus a. So t plus pi over 2. Because it's minus minus pi over 2. Oh, nope. Sorry. It is t minus pi over 2. When I first wrote down my a, I wrote it down wrong. Um, it's e to minus a s, so a is just pi over 2. Um, sorry about that. It's a little complicated, I feel like, because um, we're used to like the negatives being positives in in those exponential problems. So 
just be careful. Uh, it happens to me, so I'll be completely understanding when it happens to you, but you need to watch out for it and try to catch it as fast as possible. So that's when I caught mine. Um, so then this is gonna be our f of t minus a, u of t minus a. So my f of t minus a I just wrote as cosine of um, three times t minus pi over two. And my u has to take u of t minus a. Cool. And then again, if we wanted to write this piecewise, um, it's zero until we hit that pi over two. And then after that, it's gonna take on the f value cosine of three um, t minus pi over two. And that's how we use the um, inverse property for the um, piecewise or step functions. So one last thing I wanna do is talk about how we represent piecewise functions using u, because um, it's something that people find pretty difficult in this section. So if you're still writing, go ahead and hit pause, um, sit with the example, make sure it um, makes sense. And then I need to switch slides. And I wanna talk about representing f of t minus a, u of t minus a. And I'm just gonna give you a couple um, like example piecewise functions. So when you see these, you'll know how to do them. And just to note, um, I'm gonna switch back real quick. We already did an example where you have f is zero and then something. And we also did an example where f is something and then zero. And so now we're gonna talk about two different cases so that you could kind of cover every possibility. So for any g comma h, we can do uh, f of t starts at some function g and then becomes some function h. So like say it's linear and then it becomes like exponential. That's the first case we're gonna think about. And then we'll also think about when we have a bunch of zeros that we need to handle, um, and then in the middle it takes on some value. Um, so this first one was like it's that, and then it's that. And this example is like it's zero, and then something, and then zero again. Um, and that change is happening at A, to start g, and then at b, to stop being that function. So these are types of piecewise functions you might encounter, and I'd like you to know how to write them down. Um, I will note, The formulations we're about to use don't assume that g and h aren't zero. So those cases we did before where it's zero something or something zero are gonna follow the format of this top example. And the way we're going to represent these um, are as follows. So f starts out being g. Um, if I never passed t equals a, I would never know anything else but g. But then, um, later on, it becomes h. So I'm going to have to add h of t times u of t minus a. for this idea that after a, the function becomes h. So u of t minus a will turn on after a, and it's gonna start adding h to your function. It's gonna say, I need to count h. In the middle here, we need sort of an adjustment. We have to say, okay, I also stop being g. It's only h after that point. So I need to take away g whenever I hit that change, at A. So 
So now this function, u of t minus a, starts at a, and it says subtract g. So after we pass a, it's going to be g of t minus g of t, cancel out the g's, and leave behind h. Um, and then the second example that I want to do, the function starts at 0, so there's nothing we need to do to start. And then um, it's going to become g of t eventually, and it's going to do that when we cross a. So this term says start g of t only after a. And then this would be 0, then g of t forever if we didn't do anything else. So we need to remember that afterwards, for, u that have or for t that have crossed b, we need to take away that g again. And that's how we would represent this piecewise function. Um, just be careful. I've written it in this form where, um, <coughs> sorry, g and h are in terms of t because that's the way that you'll represent it when you first write it down to match the function that you're given. But before you can take Laplace, you do have to do that funky manipulation to turn it into g of t minus a or h of t minus a. Um, but that's all there is to this section. So hopefully you get some practice writing those piecewise functions and they start to get a bit more familiar. And um, with that, I will see you in the next set of videos.